that they could be instructed, that they could receive everything that you have for them today. Father, let our hearts be fertile ground today. Let it not be thorny ground. Let it not be so consumed with the cares of this world that it's choked out. Father, but we cast all of our cares on you. Every care of our finances, every care of our family, every care of every situation in our life. Father, we cast our cares on you today, for we know that you care for us. We, we know that you care for us, and we love you because you first loved us. Uh, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. How I many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, I want you to act like you're glad to be here. Come on, let's give them a good hand clap. How I many is glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord? God bless you. Thank you all. The classes can be dismissed now. We're going to be meeting in here every Sunday morning for prayer before we go to Sunday school. It's been requested by some of the teachers, and we want them to have the opportunity to pray as well. And it helps to corral our kids a little better as well. And uh, so we give them the opportunity to come in and pray. And uh, thank you, kids, for being so cooperative in, in prayer today. That means a lot to pastor. Amen. And uh, coming in for prayer is a very vital part of the church. How many knows prayer is vital? Prayer is vital. Praise the Lord. I know we got a, a few that's coming in, and, and we'll give them a second to get in here. But I'm excited about today. I want to tell you right up front, I'm not here to teach today. I'm here to preach. Praise God. And uh, I'm, uh, some people say, well, service is always the same. You, you sing a couple songs and maybe three songs, offering the preacher preaches. Well, it's different today. That's why I've done a calling post to tell everybody that I'm going to be preaching at 1030 today. So, uh, uh, and we do have classes all across the campus, but I did give them the option to be here to hear the Word of God, and they chose to go to class, so that's fine too. But how many wants to hear the Word of God today? I, I've got a message I know God has spoke to me, and I have uh, uh, excited about this past uh, uh, week of camp meeting. It's, it's really set another fire under me, and I'm excited about the fire God has put out in our lives. Because how many know fire recre uh, creates things? Fire burns things out, too. Fire goes in and, and burns things out of our lives. And I think we all need a, another fire in our life today. Amen. And uh, before I forget, if the ushers will come on, we'll get our Sunday school offering out of the way this morning, give you a chance to give. I was giving everybody a little bit of time to get out of the hallway uh, because this is part of the service you really don't want to miss is giving. Amen. Because it's always an uh, extra blessing you can receive. Uh, in giving, and it's amazing how God does that. Let's pray for this offering today. Lord, I love you. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to give, as always, in your Sunday school offering. We pray you take this offering, multiply it, use it, and bless those who have and those who have not as well. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, God bless you. You can uh, be seated as you are already. Praise God. Amen. We're going to go right into the Word of God this morning. Everybody say the Word. The Word of God. And I, I was hoping to have a little more in Sunday school this morning, but that's okay. Uh, that's why I like the live streaming because I know they go back always and watch that live streaming and probably watching live stream right now on the way to church probably looking at it. And we're waiting on you, so hurry up this morning. But uh, it's good to be in the house of God today, and I love the Spirit of the Lord. I just love being able to come to God's house. I don't know about you guys, but it's where my strength comes from. It's where I, I get fed uh, through songs. I get fed through teaching. I get fed through preaching. Uh, I have to be preached to. And you, you say, Brother Hunt, you preach all the time. How do you get preached to? When I go to camp meetings, when I let one of the ministers here preach, I get preached to. And, and I'm going to tell you guys right up front, this right here is the most important thing in my life, is, is giving God praise. Not just preaching, but giving God glory. Being able to come to the house of God. There's nothing more important to me than being in the house of God. And I hope, you're, I hope it's the same way with you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap if that's what you believe as well. I believe that today. Amen. So I'm going to go right into Matthew chapter 17, and, uh, and we're going to get right into the Word of God today. Matthew 17 and 15, uh, very familiar verses here that I'm about to read. And I'm going to warn you up front, some of the verses I'm going to read today, I'm just going to read a, a small uh, phase of it later on in the sermon. But it should all be on the board. I won't read it all to save time today, but because I want to get to the end of this sermon because i got something I want to uh, have a demonstration of. And that's the power of the Holy Ghost in our Sunday school. Is that all right? Matthew chapter 17, 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to the disciples, and they couldn't cure him. 
Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. How many believe we ought to rebuke the devil a little more than we do? We, do, we should. But Jesus rebuked the devil, watch what it says, and departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, How or why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. And ver for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be remo removed. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? Everybody say, How be it? Other words, he says, Other words. After all that is said, this kind goeth not out but by praying or prayer and fasting. Lay your Bibles down behind you and help me pray. God, I love you right now. I thank you for this opportunity to bring your word to this great congregation today. I ask you, Lord, to speak to every person in this still standing class today and those who are still roaming the hallway. I pray that you will bless their life as well. Let them hear the word in the hallways throughout the sanctuary, wherever they are standing right now. Let your word go before their hearts and speak and minister to their lives. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, God bless you. You can be seated today. I'm going to title today just simply this kind. This kind. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to take, I like the kind of scriptures that have limitless power of God in them. Uh, and I, I know we use them a lot, and we, we quote them a lot. Most of the preachers in here, every time they preach, they quote one of these texts that I'm about to read. Again, I'm just going to give you a part of it. But, but like the text, it says, all things are possible. Now, does that not make you feel like, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. It gives you that that unction to function, if you would, when you hear that preacher scream out, all things are possible. And I like the scriptures, I like the kind of scripture that says, we are more than conquerors through him. And I like those, I, that strengthened me. That gives me something to excite my soul over, to, to give me something to get excited about. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited today to be able to preach the power that I'm preaching today. And I talked about the power. He said, we're more than conquerors through him. That's Romans 8 and 37. Then he said in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. And he goes on, and, you know, and he don't stop there. And Jeremiah even said in Jeremiah 32, 17, he says, there's nothing too hard for thee. He told, he says, there's nothing. Church, I come today to tell you, I think sometimes, and I'm going to put me right on the front line, so don't think I'm just talking about you. But sometimes we cry over things that we feel like God can't handle. God can't do it. And we, 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 we wail on it and we get depressed over it and, and we miss church over it because we just don't understand why God's not moving in this direction. But listen, I come today to tell you there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. How many believes that today? Nothing is too hard. And these scriptures don't stop there either. Ephesians 3.20, put this one on the board. Now unto him that is able to do a seat abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Now watch this. He said, according to the what? Power that's in Jesus. That's in us. How many believe that we're sitting right now, we're sitting on a, on a bomb that can explode and a power of God can sweep over his place today? But we are sitting on a power that needs to be stared up. This power that's inside of us, and I, I don't know, I can't get it out enough. I, I'm, I, I feel like God's getting ready to do some amazing things. And I never forget what uh, uh, it was told to me one time, that sometimes you have to keep on just pushing until it does happen. No, push means pray until something happens. And you have to keep on praying. And sometimes we want to see it now. How many is a now person? You like to see it right now. I mean, you, you think in your mind, to give you an illustration here, you think in your mind, this is what I really like to see done at my house. And especially women folk, right? You get that thought in your mind and you look at your husband, can we get it done right now? Well, the husband has to take and draw the landscape of it in his mind. He has to get it figured out how many two-by-fours it's going to take, how many gallons of paint, and how big the room is, and, and give dimension. And it might take him a few weeks or, or months to get all this stuff together in his mind. But some, sometimes we want it now. But church, I come today to tell you, some things are not meant for now. You want it now, but some things are not meant for now. 
Some things are some things that God has laid out for us into the future to look at down the road. But now this is, there's so much, I believe, in the life that we live in, superficiality in this life that we live in. Or if you, in our Christianity that we live in, there's so much superficiality, which if you want to break that down in a meaning, it, it means death of character or serious thought. And I believe today there's so much, let me just say, there's so little real that we face in the life today. If everybody in this room was real today, and nobody in this room ever told a lie, well, brother, what are you trying to say? You mean I'm not real? I mean, think about it. How many times do we just walk up to people and say, that's the ugliest dress I've ever seen in my life? But you go home and say it, but you don't say it here. That woman had the ugliest dress. I, I ain't never seen a dress that ugly. But if you walk up to them and they say, how do you like my dress? Well, that's nice. That's cute. Y'all see those little lies that we say. Come on, everybody be honest with me. I mean, how many of you look at a baby so, so often you say, oh, she is so pretty. I'm going to be honest with you. You don't see too many pretty babies. You really don't because they come out with all this nasty stuff all over them. They might have a big old bump on the side of their head. And, and I remember TJ come out. I was scared. I said, oh, God, what happened to my baby? But it all formed together pretty nicely after a while. But, but we all are that way. We, we, but I'm, I believe we live in a life today that is a, a, a lack of, of, of death of character or seriousness thought in our lives. So we come to the house of God. I don't know about you. I, I love to come to the house of God and, and see everybody. I, it does me good to see people walk in the door, and it hurts my feeling when I don't see you walk in the door. And it's it, it like, oh, God, I hope everything's good. I hope they're okay. I hope everything's peaceful. I hope everything's well. But so many times we come in without that seriousness that, hey, I'm here today for one reason, not just to see Betsy, even though it's good to see her. Not just see Sister Turner, good to see her. But I'm here for one reason today. And number one reason is to give God glory for letting me be here today. Giving him honor, giving him praise, giving him thanks. That's number one reason that I'm here, to give God glory. And that's the, the seriousness that I'm here. I, 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 I feel today there's so little that is real, though. And I told the Lord years ago uh, I was not going to be a preacher if I couldn't be real. And sometimes I think my realness gets me in trouble because people don't understand realness. When you, when, you, when you be real with people, it's like uh, people ask me, why do you tell everybody your business? I said, because I don't have nothing to hide. It, it, I'm not going to go do something that i got to hide from you. That makes sense? I'm not going to run down and do something that I can't just automatically jump out and tell somebody this is what's going on. This is where I'm at. I have no problem telling people what the church pays me. If you ask me, I tell you. Well, that's no, nobody's business. Uh, well, if, if, if I was taking too much money, then I'd want to hide it. Y'all see what I'm saying? So that's the way preachers get in their life. But I'm not here to hide. But I want to be real. I'm not going to be ashamed. I told the Lord this when I came into the ministry. I said, I'm not going to be ashamed of you. See, I've had people outside the church that was not apostolic people. They come up to me and say, are you one of those holy roller churches? Are you one of those that swing from chandeliers? I just tell them, I go right back and say, if I can jump that high, I would try it. You know, I'm not ashamed to be who I am. I'm not ashamed to speak in tongues. I'm not ashamed to, to act like a minister in and outside of the church. I'm not ashamed to preach just like I'm preaching today. If I go to a Baptist church next Sunday and preach, I'm going to preach the same message. I'm not going to hold it back. I'm not going to hide. I like what a preacher said the other day. He said, we always want to show everybody getting baptized on the camera. Show everybody getting baptized. But when they go to speaking in tongues, we'll take the camera off. I said, not at Carryville. My friend, because that's, that's where the fire of the Holy Ghost is hitting people. When they hear the evidence of tongues come forth, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. How many is glad of the power of the Holy Ghost today? Glad of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you're waiting on a sermon today, this is the sermon. This is my, my sermon today. And I told the Lord years ago, I'm not going to be ashamed of you. I'm going to go forth. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to waste my time being something that's, that's superficial. I'm not going to go to that uh, avenue of, of trying to be fake to make it. I've heard preachers say, if you can't, if you not, can't worship, just fake it till you make it. Friend, I'm not a fake guy. I, I refuse to be fake. I want to be serious. I want to be real at all costs. And I go a step further. I'm not going to waste my life on something that's not miraculous. I'm not going to waste my time on something that's going to cause more confusion than it can the miraculous. I'm not here to, to build myself a kingdom. I, I, it hit me on my prayer just a moment ago. I said, God... Your, your word says to pray like this, Lord, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. And I told God just a second ago, I said, God, if it's ever been a Sunday, we need your kingdom to come. 
We need your kingdom to rule. We need your kingdom to take over. We need your kingdom. We need some joy. We need some peace. We need some love. We need some understanding. And church, I come today to tell you, when you get this kind, then you can have an awesome, miraculous move of God. How many believes that? You can have it when you get this kind. So I don't waste my time on something that's not miraculous. People have a, a right to uh, expect miraculous. I believe when they come to the church, people have a right to expect something great to happen. Now, I, I'm going I'm to talk to all of you. All of you are seasoned saints here, and you've been in this way for a long time. But I want to show you something that if we're not careful, we can fall into the status that the disciples started out with. The disciples started out with a status in their life that, that uh, they didn't, see the reasoning to fast and pray as much, and, and they didn't even know about that kind of stuff that Jesus put in their life. But what we've done, how many remembers when you started this race? You started, you remember you got the Holy Ghost, everybody remember that day, you can't forget it, can you? It's like you know, it doesn't matter if it was 60 years ago, you'll never forget that awesome day that I got the Holy Ghost. You remember the fire that God put in you, you were so fired up, and man, you would fast, you would pray, you would join prayer meetings, you would get all of that. But what happens after the years, I'm preaching to Brother Hunt today. Y'all remember, I got myself on the front auction block here today. And I'm going to tell you some things today that I've done, I've seen, and I've went through some things. But this is what I'm telling you. If we're not careful, we will become professional apostolic churches, people. And we know how to, put, we know how to dress to dress. We know how to talk to talk. We know when to shout hallelujah. We know when to say amen. Some of us forgot how to say that, though. I see that today. Because if I say amen, you might look at me. But we, 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 we're professional apostolics. But I'm going to tell you, we, we need to go back. We need to revisit that day that we first got the Holy Ghost. How much fire I had. How much church I couldn't get enough of. Y'all remember, y'all know what I'm talking about, that, 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 that desire that you had. Pastor, let me be the bus driver. Pastor, let me take up the offer. Pastor, let me be the prayer leader. Pastor, let me teach the nursery class. You know you've been in this way a long time when you don't want to teach nursery class no more. You know what that's all about. Woo, that's a lot of W-O-R-K, and I ain't got time for that. But, but we, 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 we lose that passion. We lose that want to the unction, to, to function, my friend. I come today to tell you that's why we have to do like Apostle Paul did, and we have to die daily. There's too many of us go too many days without speaking in tongues. We go too long without going to an altar and praying until something happens. We go too long. We all are guilty, but I come today to tell you this kind, to get the miraculous that we're talking about. And I believe today, that's what made me get to this point. We have visitors coming in here, falling in the altar, getting the Holy Ghost, you know, like you used to. Like you were dogmatic. You couldn't get enough of it. Visitors are coming. We're baptizing. We, we had a Bible study this past week. I was out of town. Another minister in the church said, I'm here giving somebody a Bible study right now, and they want to be baptized. I said, the water's hot. Go for it. Well, that's on a Thursday. That's, un, that's unheard of. You don't do that on Thursday. Yes. I'm going to tell you, this church baptizes more than you know during the week. Come on. Because it's not about just being here on Wednesday and Sunday night that's going to make me get to heaven. Oh, it's going to help you. It's going to help you stay a Christian. But what's going to make me get to heaven is finding me an altar and praying until I have felt the God that I serve has moved inside of me once again. And now I'm, I'm filled full of his presence. You know why? Because tomorrow the devil is going to try his best to sift everything out of me that I got today. I promise you it's just going to be Monday, 24 hours from now. No telling what's going to happen in my life. But if I can get full today, talked about that last week, then we get full of the Holy Ghost. But people come to church looking for the miraculous. I promise you, they've already heard about the church's miraculous and things that are happening. They've already looked at us on Facebook. Ninety-something 90 percent of the people that come to our church, I ask them, this is my question. Hey, good to have you, but how would you hear about us? Well, I saw you all on Face Media. I saw it on Facebook, and I was looking at you, and I said, i got to come. Matter of fact, the Norses are here because of Facebook. They said, we, we saw y'all. We said, we want some of that. We got to get some of that. And all of these things come to pass. Uh, church, I come today to tell you, this kind that we're having here at this church, uh, somebody's praying about it. Somebody's fasting about it. Somebody's saying, you know what? This is what I want to see when I go to church. I don't want to go to church just to sit and look and stare. I want to go to church and say, God, here's my vessel. I lift it up, God. 
Fill it up, God. Now, I, don't, I know this unusual Sunday school lesson today, but listen to me. We've got to have more of God now than we ever have had before. We've got to preach more than we ever have before. Pray and fast more than we ever have before. Now is not the time to lay it back. We've got to reach with everything we got. The Bible says that this kind, this miraculous that I'm talking about, this kind that everybody knows that God does, it can only come forth by nothing but praying and fasting. And now I'm going to talk about fasting a little bit to this group because I'm, I'm fixing to bust a lot of bubbles right now, okay? Because this is the thing I hear when you, when you call for a church fast, especially this group because I'm preaching to y'all. I'm not preaching to a young marriage right now. I'm preaching to y'all. I can't fast because I take medicine. Some of y'all look at me, ugh, ugh. That's true. you got to have food when you take some, some certain kinds of medicine. That is true. But let me talk about what is fasting today. Fasting is a powerful spiritual discipline that we all lack. Can I hear an amen? We lack discipline in our fasting. Now, I, I have learned to discipline in the way I eat. I've learned to discipline in, in how, what I can eat. I've learned to discipline the exercise that I have to do. I can do that. I can make flesh do that. The flesh is more taking care of the flesh things than it is the spiritual things. That's something else I told God because I knew what I was about to preach. I said, God, you got to help me today to get out of the stinking flesh and help me to move into the spirit. When we come to the house of God, if you come in the flesh today, you're not going to get one ounce out of the sermon today. You're not going to get one ounce out of the worship service today. You're not going to enjoy the word we're going to hear in a little while. You're not going to enjoy what God's going to bring because the flesh don't want to hear preaching. Much less uh, uh, 45 minutes of worship. They don't want to hear that at all. But now you give me a two-hour movie woo, and a bag of popcorn, oh, hallelujah. I can sit there and watch it. No, not really. But some of us can. I'll fall asleep during every movie I ever watch. But, but nevertheless, we, 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 we can sit in the entertainment world. But when it gets to, you know why? It's nothing against you. It's just your flesh don't want it. Everybody understand what I'm saying? It, your flesh is rotten to the core. Your flesh is sport to the recliner. Your flesh is sport to uh, prepping a little bit more of the flesh than we are the spirit. But if we, oh, I feel like preaching right now. I'm going way away from where I was going today, and I'm going to get back to it. But listen, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Fasting, like I said, is powerful spiritual discipline. Through fasting and prayer, the Holy Spirit can transform lives. Through fasting and praying, it can transform lives. And the practice of fasting, watch this, has a, a strong roots in the Bible. If you go out through the Bible, you can find it all the way through the Bible. Jesus himself spent time in fasting and praying during uh, his earthly visit that he walked the earth. And he expected his followers to follow suit and fast as well as he did. As well as he was baptized by example, he also fasted by example. And we are to so follow that example, but most commonly fasting is uh, when you abstain from food or certain type of food for a period of time. But now I will say this, there are multiple ways to fast. And this is where I'm going to pop you guys in here that, that says I can't fast because I take medicine. Well, you still can fast and eat. I'm going to show you why. Because with all the potential, uh, uh, I guess you could say of, of, uh, you grow spiritually, there's all kinds of fasting that you can do, several ways to fast. It's important to ensure that you're listening to two things. You're listening to the Holy Ghost, number one, and you're listening to your own body as number two. This, this age group, we have to be careful what we fast and, and how we fast because of the way our life has changed and the meds that we are on. But in, instead of abstaining from food altogether, you may fast from a particular type of food. Like we do in January, I had somebody tell me back in January of two or three years ago, they said, now, I just don't believe in this media fast. I said, oh, well, okay, you can fast 30 days of no food. That'd be awesome. And she said, oh, well, now, I take meds, so I can't fast either. But this media fast don't do nothing for me. But the truth to be known is I'm not going to do it because my flesh likes the media every day. And Listen to me, church. I'm preaching to me today, okay? Media has taken so much of our time. It's stealing and robbing from us. Think about this. If we would just pray as much as we look at media, we would have the biggest revival you've ever seen here in Carnival in, in history. 
if we fast, I mean, to, you know what my media exists of? I get up in the morning. I take about 15 minutes to do my live video. Every, I do a devotion every morning. And, and I started it back into the, uh, when the COVID was going on, and it just, I just can't stop it. Like the Lord says, okay, you're going to do So that's the first thing I do. I do my reading, my, my praying, and I, I do that uh, devotion. And throughout the day, I, but I, I, I hate standing in line doing nothing. You know, go to Walmart, stand in line. That line that's, that's only three resters open, and then they got 31 resters there, and, and you're standing there waiting. So I get on my media. I spend time there catching up on media, you know, make sure nobody commented anything bad. If they did, I just delete it and move on. And, and, but these are the things we do in life. How much time do we spend in the flesh? Today, if we can pray as much as it just took us to get ready today, comb our hair, put makeup on, which you shouldn't be wearing anyway, praise God. I can go all the way in the Old Testament and teach that if y'all want me to. We ain't talked that in a long time. But this is still a holiness church. I just want to let y'all know. We still believe in holiness inside and out. But if you never get on the inside, you're just a glorified mud ball. You do know that, right? Because you know what? I've seen some glorious holiness people that live like devils after they leave out of the church house. Look at things they shouldn't look at, but they're going to send everybody else to hell that don't wear a dress or don't have this or that. And we, I'm going to get off of that. You guys are so quiet and look, listen so good. But this is still a hole in this church. But the flesh, we take care of this flesh. The flesh is taking over the apostolics, let me tell you today. It's taking over our, our, our comfortability. This is the thing. Everybody looks at Pastor Hunt and says, I'm not going to be there today because of this, this, and that. And, and there's, there's, I mean, I can give you a list. I mean, i got a list in my office that's about a mile long. And I think I've heard them all. And then all of a sudden somebody called me on Thursday and said, I think I'm going to be sick by Sunday. That's the newest one that I've heard. And I thought, Lord, that, that's pretty awesome. And they already know. But the flesh is in control today. Matter of fact, the only reason that you guys are here today probably is because your flesh says you're going. Because your, you, your flesh tried to say stay home in bed today. Stay home and watch from online today. And I'm going to tell you about this online service stuff, too. I'm going to tell you about it because I'm going to talk from experience for a moment. This online service stuff, you don't get nowhere near out of it what you get when you're here in the building. Because you get online and you're watching it, and then you jump over and watch something else, check your social media over here, and, you, and then you jump back over here to the church. Because I'm telling you from experience, that's, because that's what the flesh does. The flesh is guilty like that. But the flesh today is wanting to take over the apostolics, church. Oh, i got to hurry. I, I'm, I'm so, so on, out of where I was going with this. But, but it's important to ensure that you're listening, like I said, to, you, to the Holy Spirit and also your body, that the way you fast, especially this age group, instead of abstaining from uh, food altogether, you may, uh, like I say, particular foods, um, you know, you, you, people say, I can't fast. Well, how about fasting your favorite meal? I, I'm not going to eat chicken for six weeks. Now, apostolics, we couldn't do that, could we? No apostolic here could go six weeks without eating chicken. That's our, that's our steak right there. It, <laughs> but, but, but you could if you, if you knew after six weeks that your cousin or your aunt or your loved one was going to get the Holy Ghost. Sister Ashley Wilson wanted the Holy Ghost so bad that one of her favorite beverages was sweet tea. She fasted two years, was that right? Two years without sweet tea. Could you imagine seeking after the Holy Ghost two years and you couldn't drink sweet tea? That would be easy for me because I don't drink sweet tea. I, had, I mean, I can, I can do with or without it. But you know what? That was her craving. That's what she had a, 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 a desire to have was that sweet tea. But tonight she got the Holy Ghost at ladies' conference. I can witness it because I was there. I was the driver with the ladies. She got the Holy Ghost at ladies' conference, uh, and she said, we got to find somewhere that's got sweet tea. And that was like 10 o'clock at night. The only thing that we could find, believe it or not, is Subway at 10 o'clock at night that has sweet tea. And she drank, I guess, till she made herself sick, but she had the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? we got to fast some things that will, whatever it is. Come on, you don't have to have sweet tea to take your medicine. Oh, let me preach right here. You don't have to have pizza to take your medicine. You don't have to have spaghetti to take your medicine, potatoes, green beans, and all of that. You don't have to have all this to take your medicine. You see, so there is a way that we can fast. Different kinds of foods, maybe social media like we do around here. Uh, of course, that may not affect this generation much, but you might decide to fast until a certain time or day, and, and you might want to skip maybe just one meal. I can't fast all day long, but I'm going to fast until dinner today. 
There's some of you, you forget to eat until dinner. But when they call a fast, you can't wait till breakfast. Ain't that true? Isn't it, isn't it amazing how it works when the church calls for a fast? Somebody's going to invite you out for a steak. Somebody's going to let you come around, and somebody wants to give you donuts for breakfast, and it just always flows that way. And I think that's because when the temptation is there, that sacrifice that we have to fast is what makes God move. Now, I don't know about you, when I can get this flesh under subjection and say, you're not going to eat until. Flesh don't like that. You know what the flesh does? The flesh starts growling. Yeah, the flesh starts, starts looking at every billboard you pass by. I got food on it. Everybody calls you and say, man, you want to go eat lunch together today? It's just the way the devil works. But you know why? Because the flesh is weak. But how many, how many would love to get your flesh under subjection? I won't help God. I need God to help me do that today. You might decide, like I said, fast a certain meals, you know, but whatever you do, enjoy your spiritual nourishment, fasting, and prayer as often as you should. Fasting and prayer can also bring about more than just a personal transformation because when God's people, watch this, when we begin to practice biblical fasting and prayer, God hears from heaven. And it's amazing. And he, he, and he reaches down and heals our land. I don't know about you, but I want God to heal our lives, heal our church. Come on, our church needs a healing today. Well, what's wrong with our church, Brother Hunt? Do you know who your church is? Your church is your brother sitting in front of you. Your church is your brother sitting across the way from you. Your sister sitting over here. There, there's, there's hurting things in our church. People are hurting. My friend, I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you are a little toe. How many's ever stomped your little toe? Did it not make your whole body hurt when you hit that thing? Woo, my Lord, you crunch, you grinch. Oh, man, that hurts. And, and this is a little toe. A messed up little toe can make you walk like this. Oh, what's wrong with you? I just, I hit my little toe. You see what I'm saying? And that's the way it needs to be with the body of Christ. When we come together, we got to understand there's hurting in the body. But fasting and praying, my friend, we, we can have healing in our lives, our churches, our communities, our nation, and much less our whole world. The disciples turned the world upside down. I believe it can start right here in Carterville. Flipping this world upside down. Fasting and prayer can bring about revival, a change in direction and fulfillment of the Great Commission. Miracles and revival will not come through just education, I, even though I'm for education. I am. I'm for it 100%. It doesn't come just through good talent. I think we got good talent here at Carnival First Pentecostal Church. It doesn't come through that, although I'm, I'm for having talent. There's nothing wrong with talent, as long as it don't try to succeed the anointing and the direction of the pastor. Let me just plug that in. Worship does not take lead over what the pastor has for the, for the day. Let me say it again. Worship does not take lead what God has given a pastor free service to preach. We're going to have some good singing, and they try to go along with what I'm preaching a lot of times if they know. And, and so we try to get things together. We try to commune together. But let me tell you this. Uh, to turn this world upside down, it's, not going to, it's going to take more than just prayer. I mean, a talent. It's going to take praying and fasting. And we got to have that. we got to have it through the human wisdom as well. This kind, where everybody knows that God does, it, it, is, it is the miraculous kind that cometh forth for nothing but praying and fasting. And in our text today, our Lord had been up on the Mount of Transfiguration. We know the story. And if you want to take time to read that, our chapter today that we read, you can read all this. But James, Peter, James, and John, they accompanied him in his transfiguration here. And they had spoken with Moses and Elijah, or Elias is what they called him in the New Testament. But our Lord had his body transfigured, watch this, likened to his glorified body and given them a foretaste of what the coming kingdom was going to be like. And our Lord comes back here in our text the, with the transfiguration. And as, the, as he returns, a man runs to him into this, right after he had a transfiguration. What a time. You know, it's amazing how when you have a great revival, how you can go out and eat and you can help pray the waitress through. Because you just had a feeling and had a great anointing take over you. And that's just what happened to all of these. A great anointing just took place. And a great time in the spirit it just took place. And then he had uh, this man runs unto him and cries out to, to the Lord and says, My son has a dumb spirit about him. And he wallows on the ground, he foams in his mouth, and he casts himself in the fire. What can we do? Hey, we went to your disciples. We done went to them. And we went to them and we asked them to do something. And they could not do nothing. Church, I'm going to tell you, you don't know how much it, it irks me or hurts me or, 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 or breaks my heart, if you would, 
When somebody comes in here possessed with, with so many habits and addictions and leave out the same way. Because we have that power that you mentioned a while ago. We have that power to pray hand or lay hands on them and pray for them and they can be cast out. That, that addiction, that spirit of uh, cocaine or that spirit of homosexuality, that spirit of, of hooked on pornography can be released out of their lives. But if it's not, maybe we're not fasting and praying like we should be. Everybody say, help me, Lord. So the Lord brought him here, and he, and he, he went up, and, and I believe today the reason that they could not see this kind come forth, the Scripture says, because they wasn't praying, they wasn't fasting. But the reason we're not seeing, if, you got, if you're wondering why we're not seeing what we saw in 1960, is because we used to pray and fast more than we do in 2021. Can I raise my hand? When I was first in this, I, I, I mean, it was probably a day a week we fasted, at least, sometimes three days. I had this one man come up to me one day. Uh, he says, I feel the Lord told me to tell you if you and I would fast seven days with no food, God will heal your baby, TJ, with, with diabetes. First thing I said, when you want to start right now? I was ready, and we did. We fasted seven days. You're talking about it. That was the longest I've ever fasted, by the way. I haven't done like Jesus 40 days yet, but I'm going to tell you this. That, that seven-day fast, uh, after three or four days, it was a lot easier after the, the next four days. But this is the thing. I, you know why it was easier after the three or four days? Because the flesh was used to not eating. You see, when the flesh gets used to something, it's hard to break it. Can I hear a man? But that flesh, the reason we're not seeing it, because it's taken over in 21 and what we used to do, we're not doing no more. But remember, this kind that we're talking about today is only going to come through fasting and praying. Somebody needs to push the plate back. Somebody needs to come early to pray like we're praying. And, and, I, and I'm just going to say this because I need to say it or I'm going to burst, okay? So many people, they don't want to come when it's time to pray. They only want to pray when their flesh feels like praying. When the flesh can get all the recognition for what's about to happen now, I'm going to pray. Now I'm going to take time, and I'm going to take part of the service, and I'm going to have prayer. Well, why wasn't you there Saturday night at prayer or, or pre-service prayer or the prayer revival that we had? You know, not too many years ago, we had a prayer revival that had about this many every night because I had one preacher tell me, well, I thought y'all was just teaching about prayer, just prayer. But Jesus himself says these things. That devil, that reason you disciples had a problem casting out that devil is because you had a problem fasting and you had a problem praying. Now, I know y'all rather me preach a, 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 something that we're doing good, and, 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 but I'm going to tell you, we're rotten to the core. We're rotten, and we're spoiled. We are. We got air conditioning we can sit in, soft seats we can sit in, and Preacher, preacher gets a sermon together, and worship team's got it all together, and I can just sit here and enjoy, and I like that song, I don't like that song, and I can get this, I can get that. But, friend, I'm here to tell you, if we want to have that old-fashioned revival again, somebody said, I wish we had old-fashioned, we'll start fasting again. Start praying again. Start coming early again. Start, start reaching with everything you got again. Come on. You'll be surprised what 15 minutes before church will do to you. Number one, it'll make you get out of your seat. It'll make you feel the power of God. Come on, I'm telling you, am, am I out of the Scripture today? These, this kind comes by praying and fasting. Watch what he said in Psalms 35 and 13. I'm going to read some uh, text here real quick. I humble my soul with fasting, and my prayer will return unto thy own bosom. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. I'm not sure if I gave it. The, the whole verse may be on the board, but I'm just going to read part of it. The Apostle Paul admonished us to give ourselves to fasting and prayer. In Joel 1, 14. The people here were admonished to sanctify themselves. Daniel 9 and 3, he said, I set my face unto the Lord to seek my prayer and supplication with what? Fasting and salt salt sackcloth and ashes. He said, I'm going to put this all before the Lord. 2 Corinthians 11 and 27, the apostle Paul was giving this, 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 his little biography of his life. And he said, in fasting, often, in fasting, often. He said, this is what I do. Even though I went through all of this in fasting often is why God takes care of me. Something you don't hear much about anymore in churches is fasting and praying. 
And what I'm teaching today, I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I really like to teach something different. But the Lord wouldn't let me get away from it. And I, I said, okay, Lord. And I just studied through the week while we was gone. But what I'm trying to say is this. If we want the spiritual, let's, let's say if we want the supernatural, we have to get back to God's method and, the, and His ways. The way he says it's going to happen. we got to get back to it. It's not, and, and again, I'm, I'm so thankful and blessed uh, today to be pastoring one of the best churches that I've ever pastored in my life. This is a great place to be. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. All together. But my friend, we cannot have good church just because it's pretty. Just because you got nice landscaping. And we get bragged all the time about how pretty our building is. And people tell me all across the city, you guys built a, such a nice building. It's all pretty. All oh, looks nice. And I'm excited the way it's laid out. And, and we got other things coming in the future that's going to upgrade, if you want to call that. But all of that's not what it's going to take to have a supernatural move of God and people filled with the Holy Ghost. But what it's going to take is somebody's got to step back to the plate and say, you know what, Pastor? I can't do three meals, but I'm going to guarantee you one meal a day. I'm going to fast until I see a move of God. I can't fast all my food, but I'm not going to eat no more pasta until I see a move of God. I'm not, I, I can't fast all food, but Taco Bell is out of my menu until I see God touch my family. You say, Brother Hunt, that's just ridiculous. Uh, that's why you're not seeing it because you're calling it ridiculous. It's easier to talk bad about it than just do it. Can I hear amen? There's no way man could do it by himself. No way talent can do it. This is, this, this is a work of God, and it's going to take, uh, man can't do it. It's going to take this kind. You can have pretty good meetings, and we do have some good meetings, I really believe. Uh, we have evangelists come in. We have singers come in, and we can have all of that. You can, you can have special meetings, and we're going to keep having that. We, we already got our men's conference lined up for next year, and we got two great speakers that's going to be here. It's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, Brother Kenneth, uh, uh, yep. Help me out. Kenneth, you know who I'm talking about. And Brother uh, James Chester is going to be one of the speakers. And Brother uh, Kenny um, he, he come Carpenter, he's going to be here with us in our men's uh, conference. That's going to be awesome. See, all these are pretty things we can lay out in these meetings. Uh, you can, and, and guess what? We're going to have, like we had a children revival. We had, we had a few kids. Now, that was a lot of work for Joey and Pearl. Man, they've done a hard work. And, but you know what? People got the Holy Ghost. We had adults crying for the Holy Ghost in a children's revival. You see, that was awesome. So you may have a few get the Holy Ghost along the way. You may have people get blessed, and you may baptize. Uh, but I want to tell you, if you want a revival that will shake the whole, whole town, you want a revival that might even make the newspaper, my friend, you, you start fasting and praying with these revivals. You start pushing back the breakfast meal. That's one of your favorite meals to sit down and eat your ham and eggs and your big cup of coffee. Come on, how, that, how many knows that one week that we fasted coffee was probably the, the toughest week we, we had a fast in January? Coffee is something that, well, not anymore, but it used to be one of my, my to-go-to beverages. I just had to have that two or three times a day. But, but now it, 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 it's just not there no more. But, but I will drink it. I had a half cup this morning. But, but you know, that, that's, that coffee is so addictive. But how about fast coffee until your husband gets the Holy Ghost? Or how about fast, I got one for y'all. How about fast your tea place that you go get all them high dollar teas? Uh, Brother Manning's not here. I don't even see him, I don't think. So I, I'm good. He might throw something at me. But you know what? We get addicted to those, don't we? We, we cause those today. I, but I'm going to care. I'm going to just tell you, I don't care today. Uh, I, I believe if you want to have a move of God and you start fasting, you start praying, the, the, we, we can get the town's atheists to come in here and get delivered. We can get the towns drunk to come in here and be delivered off of alcohol. If we'll start fasting, we'll start praying. Somebody said, well, they just don't want it, Brother Hunt. If they want it or not, when Jesus stepped off the boat, because he had already been fasting and praying, even though he didn't want it, uh, he, had to make, he had to run down and bow down and say, what do I have to do with you, Lord? And his name was Legion because he was possessed with so many devils. But the Lord said, just get out of him. Get out of there. And I'm going to tell you, the same God that did that is the God that's here today. I don't care how... And I'm, I could probably get myself in trouble with if anybody sees this video, but this is truth, my friend. I got, I got some uh, pastor friends, some uh, preaching friends, evangelist friends of mine. Man, they're so cool and they're so suave with their preaching, and they got these words they can say that long. 
and, 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 they, and they start out really good. I know one guy, I won't call his name, but, but man, you go to camp meeting or go because of time, and he'll start preaching, and his words will be that long, and he'll have all this stuff, boy, just put out just right, and he'll have you just looking like, oh, what is he saying? I don't know that word. And, and it's just one of those suave messages, you know, just, just smooth preaching. But by the time he gets about midways, I notice that the big words leave because anointing came in and took over. And I'm here to tell you, God's not a God. You can speak big words if you want to, but when you get into the Holy Ghost, there's a difference in education and anointing. There's a difference in knowing how to pronounce big words and anointing. When you get into the anointing, things happen. But you can be as suave as you want to. You can come up here and quote as many scriptures as you want to. Have a personality with, that, you know, that you better than anybody else. Have a big reputation. Your name is one of the big name preachers that they call big name. And if you want God to work in everybody's life, you know how it's going to happen. It's not going to happen because you've got all of that. But it's going to happen because you took time somewhere, you prayed, and you fasted. And now that's how God is going to move. This kind is the way it's going to work, church. I come today to tell you, you can get a little feel good today. You can feel good today, but the, the best kind you can get is when you push back the plate. Now, I don't have a clock, and I can't, yeah, I can see that up there. I think it's 11, is that 11, 14? Oh, Lord Jesus. I can finish, so I can do this. But let's look at Judges chapter 6 and 12, if you could. And these are the angels of God that came to a young man here called Gideon, who likewise was, was a, uh, a timid fellow. He was an introvert, if you would. But I want to read this today. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And watch what he said. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Now, and watch what he said. And he's kind of, I'm just going to kind of say it the way I see it in this text. And he began to just shake. He says, Oh, God, if you're with me, then why is all this befalling us? And where are, and where be all of his miracles, which our father told us of saying? Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, and now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the meeting? Oh, God, where are you at? And I want you to notice the two questions that was asked. Gideon asked the Lord. He says, why then is all of this befalling us? Pastor, 19 years, 10 years youth pastor beforehand, I can tell you, I've heard this same question from people. God has let me down. You're mistaken, brothers and sisters. God didn't let you down. You're forgetting those quotes that I told you beforehand that I like to, I like to read. God is for me. Who can be against me? All things can work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Uh, oh, I'm going to tell you, God is with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. we got to start quoting those scriptures again. Friend, you know why? Because he says, God, why hast thou befalling us? And where is thy miracles? Where are they at, O oh God? How come I'm not seeing what I used to see? How come I'm not being what I used to be? The bottom line is this, brothers and sisters, is we're not doing what we used to do. Somebody's got to pick up the table, the, 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 the scraps maybe, or it may not be a whole lot, but i got to pick up the scraps. It may not be a whole lot just running over in my pew, but I want to be the worshiper on my pew. Let me ask you this. Most of you are sitting in the same seat you always sit in. That's your seat. Your, your bottom's in grooved in that seat. That's, how I mean, that's, just, that's just the way it is. But let me ask you a question. Who's the worshiper on your row? Who's the crazy one on your seat? Who's the one that gets all beside yourself on your seat? Who's the one you would put their walk to God? They're, they're close to God. They got it going on. You see, so many times we, we, we can judge people by the actions they put forth. But Gideon said, God, where is your hand at, God? And why are you befalling us? And this is what I came up with. Gideon missed the sermon in, in the first verse that I read today. Can you put that one back up and get uh, there? No, uh, yes, in uh, Judges 6. I'm sorry. Judges 6. At first verse, 6 and 12. Is that what it was? 6 and 12. He missed the first sermon. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Church, let me tell you something. The angel appears in this place more than you think. He may not be pretty and have wings flapping around and flying around with a halo on. And, but you know what? God, God brings angels in this place more than we think. But Gideon missed the Sunday morning sermon. 
And by Monday morning, he was just hey, he was just messed up in his spirit. And I don't know what, but dude, God, where you at? Why are you be following me? But watch this. Go back to twelve, if you could. Go back to twelve, please. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Church, we're not, you're not hearing me this morning, but hear me, hear me well. It may be pitiful, and you may be surrounded by the enemy. But I feel like Elijah to tell you this morning, look a little higher. Because all around you, the Lord said, I am going to surround you, and I'm going to encamp angels all around about you. I got your back. Quit whining and crying and start fasting and praying. Start fasting again. Start praying. Well, Brother Hunt, you don't understand. I work 12 hours a day, and I got hard labor, and I got to eat, and I, my body's not going to be able to survive. I told you, you got to follow after the spirit, and you got to follow after the, the anointing, number one. Then you got to look at your body. What can my body do? Hey, I may not can fast all my food, uh, but I can fast parts of it. Uh, I can take my lunch break and go in my car and just pray and get lost in the Lord. When's the last time you just fasted at lunch and just prayed instead of eating? You ain't got to answer that. Probably been a long time. Church, if we do our part, let me tell you, God's going to do his part. He'll take care of the rest. We need to start quoting scriptures, like I said to ourselves, quoting those powerful scriptures that I told you a while ago about. Was it James 5, 17, Elias or Elijah? If you want to go back to the Old Testament, he's called Elijah. He was a man of like passion as we are. And he, he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained, not on the earth for a space of three years and six months. He was a man just like we are. Miracle after miracle he saw. Uh, we read about in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We can find all these miracles for, for, from great men and women of God. And they all were like passion as we are. They were just like us. We read about them. We preach about them. We talk about them. But we're not seeing what we want to see. Were they greater, Sister Turner? Was Elijah greater than us? Brother Bo, no, they wasn't greater. They just prayed and fasted more. They went to the altar more. They, they built altars. When's the last time you built an altar? Jesus told disciples that this kind goeth out by praying and fasting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with what Paul said right here this morning. Uh, praying and fasting. Watch, watch what Paul says. I believe this, this, this kind. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 2, And I, brother, when I came to you, I came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and the fear and as much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. There's that demonstration of the spirit and of power. Let me tell you today, we're looking in the wrong places for a move of God. We're looking in the wrong direction. we got to have a demonstration of the spirit and of the power. Come on, too many people are trying to build a worldly kingdom and see how big I can get it. But you, you, you can build it if you find the money. And you can build it if you've got the right people in the right places. Uh, but, friend, to have a revival like I'm preaching about this morning, this kind goes by praying and fasting, Brother Greenslate. We're going to talk about and pray for your granddaughter here in a little bit. But I'm going to tell you, when we begin to pray and we begin to fast, uh, not only is legs going to move and hands are going to move, uh, but she's going to get out of that bed and she's going to say, hey, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. God is the only reason we can do this through, fasting and praying. And I was with you in weakness, verse 3, and in, in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching are not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit of power. Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. It was by the ignorance of preaching, the Bible says, that they were saved. But we as flesh people, we want to see how many degrees they got. Make sure they say every word just right. We're, we're, we're listening to more of the, the, the words that are not pronounced right than we are the words that's going to get us to heaven. Because flesh comes in and rues us and, and moves us. Paul goes on to tell us a reason that we're not seeing miracles in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 1. And I'm going to read this real quick. I know i got to go. But this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers. He says false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those who are, are, that are good. 
I'm going to tell you, there's people, they're not going to like, they're not going to like for the church to do good. There's people right now, I, I can name names, but I won't do it. They, they want to see this church fall. They don't want it to see it be blessed. They don't want to see it to grow bigger. And, and, and they're not here. They, they're not in this building I'm talking about. But they, they're outside looking at everything. that they're And they watch the video. Occasionally they'll watch a video so they can judge what's going on and not even be here. But I'm going to tell you, we got to quit judging and start fasting. we got to quit complaining and start praying. we got to get back to the altar like we've never seen before and pray like we've never done before. Number four says you're going to have traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers, pleasures more than lovers of God. Number five, verse five, having the form of God but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are ye that which creep into the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away from divers of lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. All of this that I'm preaching today, all of this is happening today. All of this that I just named. And it's taken away from us, and we're not fasting, and we're not praying. We can blame it on anything that we want, the song we pick, the preaching we have. Too much world in the church. You can blame it on all of this that you want to blame. But the bottom line is the reason we're not having this kind is this, is because we're not praying, and we're not fasting. Now, I want us to stand in this place today. We, we desire the cake, but we want somebody else to fix it. We desire the good steak, but I want a steakhouse to make it right, and then I'll eat it. We desire all these things, and I want to take a few minutes right now before we get out of this room, at least a minute or two. I'm already over, but that's all right. We, we got, we got a, all day to have church. I want to take a few minutes. I want us to lift our hands right where you're standing, and I want you to say, God, Help me to comprehend your word today. You said, Lord, that the lunatic, the, the devils, the things of our lives that's crowding us down, these things can happen, be removed from our lives if we would let our grain of mustard seed faith begin to work. And we can start praying and fasting and believing that you can touch our lives. And I believe today, God, in this room, that the power of the Holy Ghost that I'm speaking about, that we're going to have today in our worship service, in our ministering today, I believe that it's going to happen because somebody in this room has taken time to pray and fast this week. They have thought about you. They have dedicated time aside, as Daniel did, and prayed and believed for a move of God in this room today. It doesn't matter how good of a preacher we have, how much good singing we have. It matters mostly what God's people have done pre-service style. And got our hearts where they should be today. Come on, lift your hand and say, God, help me to fast more. Help me to pray more, oh God. Lord, I want to see a power and demonstration of your Holy Ghost. Uh, but God, I understand this kind only comes uh, through praying and fasting. This kind only comes through dedication. Uh, this kind only comes through discipline. Uh, but God, I need your help today. Come on, would you lift your hand and say, God, help me. Help me, God. Put me in that right direction. Put me where I need to be. Come on, I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every soul in this room. I pray today for this service, God. I pray your anointing is going to take place. Uh, God, God, we have prayed and we have fasted and we believe it today that you're going to fill this house uh, full of your spirit today. Uh, God, you're going to anoint our souls, God. Uh, devil, you are a liar and I command you to back up and leave this situation.